So, to start with, I'm just going to think like I would if I was drawing any other subject. Uh, I'm going to get a basic block in of the underdrawing of everything I'm dealing with. So basically I've decided to draw, and what we're all going to draw today would be the head, the neck, and the upper shoulders. Anything past that we're not going to deal with. So. See an oval-like shape for the head, but with the way her hair is coming down, I also see a diagonal. And I'm trying to make a reference to as much in the beginning as possible. So here is the bottom of the shadow that's right just past uh, her clavicle. Shoulders, here's rough estimate of the center line. And I can tell from my perspective, her head is just slightly tilting, or slightly turned rather, to my right. So I need to make a reference to that early on. Division of where the hair comes in. Brow ridge. And if you look at the eyes, you'll notice the only part of the eyes that are catching light is a little bit of her eyelid on this side that's catching a little bit of light. The rest of the eyes are, are in shadow. So I'm not worrying about putting a hard contour around the eyes. I'm drawing the eye socket as it's described by the way the lights fall. And you can kind of notice I'm trying to move as quickly as possible from area to area. And I am sort of measuring at this point, but I'm measuring with my eyes. After I get things blocked in, I'm going to go back and, and uh, check them. Check everything that I've blocked in and make the appropriate corrections. And notice I'm holding my pencil like this. I'm not doing that. I want to pull the lines across the surface to get an accurate feel for the shapes. So already I've made a reference right here for the zygomatic, the cheekbone on this side. Straight over, there's going to be the cheekbone here. If you look close, you'll see a lighter light, like a highlight running through here. That's the plane change, front plane to a transition plane. Into the brow ridge into the nasal bone. I've already got an idea of some important points to measure for later on. And I'm not too committed to anything at this point. If I find out that everything's off, I could easily erase it because I haven't drawn it very dark, so avoid making dark lines too soon. Oh, that's going to come down. Quarter. So the distance from, from my perspective, where I'm sitting, that from where the um, light and shadow meet the end of the nose to the top of the head, that should fit in. That should be equal to the distance of where the light and shadow meet at the end of the nose that would fit into this one and a quarter times from here to where that shadow is coming in at the clavicle, that distance. So I already need to make an adjustment. So one and a quarter is going to take me right about to here. I should probably come out of the middle. Check it again just to make sure. Almost one and a half. Not quite one and a half, but a little past between one and a quarter and one and a half. Yeah, in the right spot. 
And if you look on uh, the way the shadow is falling across her shoulders towards her clavicle, you can tell there's a, like a point of the shadow as it comes to its far, uh, farthest point down. And if I go from that point and I go straight up, I'm just a hair to the right of the center of the nose. The center of the nose coming in right about here, I'm just a little to the right and down. So that's where that shadow is going to have to be. Now I'm basically finding the shape of that shadow by measuring the directional shift in its edge as it moves along the form. So it kind of comes up, goes over the clavicle, goes up towards the neck. cheekbone in relation to the clavicle. Two cheeks in relation to each other. And as I sculpt out, you could almost say the shape of the shadow on the eye socket, I start to give reference Little by little, what's going to happen in the form change, the plane change. And like I said last week, don't worry about getting likeness immediately. It kind of develops over time. you're ever unsure, measure. The shape of that shadow at the bottom of the nose. What's that? Uh, I think that's about as, actually let me check it. That might be as clear as projector's going to do. Oh, it's really better. This isn't exactly the best projector in the world, but... And the mouth lines up from this perspective, right near the center. It's a little bit past the center of the uh, eye because the head's turned just a hair. Like I said last week, don't assume anything about the pose. Always analyze it and check it. And don't worry about your construction lines because we're going to be drawing over this in pastel anyway, so those are going to go away. But it's good to keep them there for a little while. It'll help you remember what measurement decisions you were making. Here's that shape of that shadow as it goes over. Basically, the shadow is showing you the change of front plane to side plane. There's your plane break. Bottom of the chin, which has a little bit of that reflecting red on it where the nose is, the bottom of the nose where it's meeting the light. And here's an example of how, because I'm at a lower perspective and she's above me, if I check the distance from the bottom of the nose to the chin, because of the slight foreshortening, it's equivalent to, from this perspective, bottom of the nose to just above the brow ridge, versus if I was at a straight uh, head-on, same eye level uh, point of view. So that's why I say you use those um, rules about proportions as a guide rather than a replacement for observing.
and always leave open the fact that maybe you mismeasured, which is why I just kind of give a general mark to that measurement and I didn't commit to it just yet. real clearly from this side, see it has that diagonal turn to it. So yeah, the top of the head is going to be here, because from this perspective, the distance of the brow ridge to the top of the head, considering she's so far above me, is equivalent to the brow ridge to just about where the edge of the mouth is coming in. So that distance is equivalent to the brow ridge to the top of the head, which is going to be right there. And don't, when you're doing the head, don't just, when you're trying to refine it, put it just a general curve. If I look real close, this head, the top of the head, has structural change to it, from the very top to a transition plane. So, analyze that. And to a certain degree, I would treat the hair like drapery in the sense that from pose to pose, it's going to change a little bit. Just get yourself in the general ballpark, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to torture her and make her keep changing her hair until it's, it's equivalent to somebody's drawing, but then another person on the other side of the room, it's like, well, from my perspective, the hair is a little like this, and then we sit here all day and, you know, Basically, I'm looking at how the hair is changing direction based on the structure of the, of the top of the head. Just the ribbon. You notice most of the lines right now are straight line segments. There's one direction, there's another direction. If I look close, obviously there's more of a, a roundedness there, but like I said earlier, I'm looking for the structure right now. see a tiny bit of light on the bottom lip, right about here, but not a lot. So you can kind of notice I've avoided making a hard outline around the mouth because a lot of the mouth is in shadow. I don't see the edge of the mouth equally all around. So avoid doing this, you know, cartoon mouth that has a hard edge around it. And if you look real close, you'll notice there's a little bit of reflected light coming in. It's basically going along the sternocleidomastoid that's connecting right there to the clavicle that we talked about last time. So I'm going to give a general tone, just a little bit darker than the tone of the um, board, to mass in clarity that this is shadow and the other area is light. And then I'm going to go back in and make some further uh, refinements. So I'd say I'm, a, I'm still approximate right now.
And I would use a B carbon pencil or a charcoal pencil. Maybe a medium would be okay. Here he is, all light mass, a little bit of light here. And it goes back into shadow. And just because she has dark hair doesn't mean it's going to be an even dark value all the way across. If you look close here, it's catching light. Over here is in shadow, so the value shift is present. shadow that's coming through right here. It's not as dark as the hair, but it's still an area that's not getting hit by light. Just a touch. And if you get to this stage and you find something is off, and it's a measurement by an inch, quarter inch, half inch, whatever, change it. Now's the time to make changes, not, you know, two or three class sessions from now when you've already got color laid in. When you get your foundation in and solid before you start laying in color. out all the smudging so I can give clarity to the light or where the light's going to fall. And then I'm going to start refining the shapes a little bit more. So it's, like I was saying earlier, I'd still say right now we're in the approximation stage. The worst thing you can do is want um, or expect or drawing to be solid in just a couple of minutes, so take your time. And if you look right here on the model, you'll notice it's a little bit darker here than it is here, and it is here. That's because that plane change of the form coming down. It's still catching some light, but it's tilting in a little bit different direction away from the light versus the forehead and the nose are tilting a little more towards the light, that's why there's a value shift. So I want to make a reference of that early on. So I can use it later on when we get into uh, color and being more specific. So 
I'm going to go around the sh shape of the um, eye and the cheekbone and refine it a little bit more, make the needed corrections. Some of you might find, from your particular point of view, that you get this stage blocked in quicker than other people. Different points of view are going to have different shapes, which some points of view are going to be a little more challenging, some not as much. But don't misunderstand that as you go to do your self-portrait and you think, well, I got my drawing in class blocked in so quick, my self-portrait should come in just as quick. That's not necessarily true. Even if we were to stop the pose right now and she were to go on a break, I've already lined up and measured enough to where, the, to where I know how the light's falling and know where her land, the bony landmarks are relating to one another. I could easily set her back up in the same uh, position. So if you think about it, this isn't really any different than what we did with the head cast earlier in the semester. The only difference is this, uh, this head is actually alive and breathing and isn't just an inanimate object. <clears throat> and, you know, if uh, two and a half weeks from now, your drawing doesn't look too much like Val, she's going to get mad. And she gets offended by that, so you got to pay attention and measure. Right here, if you look really close, you'll notice a little subtle halftone shape moving in this direction, which is similar to a subtle one over on this side. That's the uh, form then the muscle moving right over that cheekbone. The bottom of the mouth, it's in shadow. The reference to where a little bit of light is hitting. I kind of, as I draw this eye, I look at the other side to make sure they're lining up symmetrically. So a decision I make on here. What I might do is I'm going to let her take a break. I'll probably continue on this for another five or ten minutes after that, and then I'm going to let you guys take, uh, start yours. Are there any questions at this point? Okay. So we'll take a quick five. <clears throat> 